Right now at noon, a second victim testifies during the trial for the former UW football player charged with sexual assault. And how Sun Prairie's post office is honoring a fallen firefighter, Captain Corey Barr. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Very brisk this morning. Absolutely, but I'll tell you what, the humidity is staying on the low side and the sunshine is going to be sticking around for us. Here's another live look outside and it almost looks like we took the picture from yesterday and simply showed it to you again. But visible cloud track shows you that there are nothing but fair weather clouds around. Any kind of true organized cloud cover is going to be throughout western parts of Iowa. Temperature wise, we're a little bit warmer though. Already at 76 at the noon hour. This is actually where we topped out yesterday. Those winds still coming out of the north and northeast, somewhat off the lake. Things are a little bit cooler as you work your way towards the lake shore. Manitowoc sitting at 68 right now. We'll continue with the quiet weather going through the afternoon. The humidity is going to be staying low as well. We're watching a couple rain chances in the forecast, though, Mark. I'll tell you when those rain chances could be coming up. All right, see you in a few minutes. Thank mm -hmm. you, Chris. The Janesville Police Department is currently asking vehicles to avoid part of Holiday Drive after a fatal crash this morning. You're asked to avoid Holiday Drive between Kennedy Road and Shorewood Drive. Officials are still on the scene. This is a developing story, and we'll have more information on Channel3000.com. Day two for the trial for the former Badger football player who was charged with two counts of sexual assault is currently underway. This morning, a nurse testified about the victim's intoxication and injuries following the alleged assault. A second victim also testified, saying she didn't remember meeting Quentin Cephas the night of the alleged assault. She says she received a phone call from the other victim and a nurse saying that she should come to the hospital to get a rape kit done. I was very confused. I was trying to, I, the last thing I wanted was for that to be happening right then. I just didn't want to believe it. I was in shock. I was just very like grossed out and I just really didn't want to deal with it in the moment. I just didn't want to do anything. We will have more on the second day of the Quentin Cephas' trial on later newscasts and as always all day long on channel3000.com. A conservative law firm is asking the Wisconsin Supreme Court to dramatically scale back the ability of governors to change the intent of lawmakers through partial budget vetoes. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty filed the lawsuit today on behalf of three taxpayers. It's the most aggressive challenge yet to Democratic Governor Tony Evers' 78 partial vetoes to the state budget that the Republican-controlled legislature approved in late June. It seeks to overturn four of Evers' partial vetoes, arguing that he improperly and unlawfully used his broad constitutional powers to create new laws never approved by the legislature. But a favorable ruling would limit future governor's veto powers as well. If successful, the move would reverse more than four decades of precedent. Progressives and moderate presidential hopefuls battled it out over policy and the direction of the party in night one of the Democratic debate. Tonight, the race will feature the front runners along with nine more candidates. Laura Podesta reports from Detroit. Night one of the Democratic debate in Detroit put divisions within the party on full display. You can't just spring a plan on the world and expect it to succeed. Moderates tried to make the case that going too far left will alienate voters. So I think Democrats win when we run on real solutions, not impossible promises. When we run on things that are workable, not fairy tale economics. Progressives pushed back. You know, I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. The clashes were mainly over policy differences, including Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan. For senior citizens, it will finally include dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all, you don't know that, second Bernie. of all, we'll come I, to you in a second, I do know, and I wrote the damn bill. The front runner in the race, Joe Biden, wasn't at last night's debate and candidates steered clear of his name. Tonight, the former vice president will be center stage. Candidates are going to go after Biden, probably. And the question for Biden is, you know, if he has maybe one or two people coming after him, you can manage that. What if six candidates 
are coming after him. That's right. a lot to handle. Nine other presidential hopefuls will join Biden tonight, including California Senator Kamala Harris. I will express differences and articulate them. Polls show Biden leading because Democrats view him as the candidate most likely to be able to beat President Trump in 2020. Laura Podesta, CBS News, Detroit. And former Vice President Biden released an op-ed this morning touting the Affordable Care Act, which he helped pass under President Obama and vowed to stand up to any Republican or Democrat vowing to overturn Obamacare. This just in, the Milwaukee Brewers are making some moves ahead of the Major League Baseball deadline. ESPN is reporting that first baseman Jesus Aguilar has been sent to the Tampa Bay Rays for right-handed pitcher Jake Ferreira. The Capital One data breach has many of us asking, has my information been compromised? While it's too early to tell how many people in Wisconsin were hacked, there are some things you can do to know if your information was stolen. First, check all of your accounts online, not just your Capital One account. Consumers should look for any discrepancies in their purchasing habits at least every couple of weeks. Hackers may use your information to open credit cards and apply for loans outside of ones you currently have. So check your credit report often. If you find out you have been hacked, Here's some advice from the Wisconsin Bankers Association. Contact your companies right away. Contact the financial institution that um, certainly uh, where you believe the fraudulent activity is happening, but you really need to alert all of your financial institutions, all your credit card companies that something is going on, and then potentially even law enforcement as well. For more resources, head to our website, channel3000.com. In more local news, a Sun Prairie post office will likely be renamed in honor of fallen firefighter Captain Corey Barr. The Senate passed bipartisan legislation to make the change Wednesday. Barr died last July while responding to a gas leak in downtown Sun Prairie. He is credited with evacuating more than 100 people from the affected area before the explosion erupted. Senators Tammy Baldwin and Ron Johnson introduced the legislation in April to designate the post office at Linenrud Drive in Sun Prairie as the Fire Captain Corey Barr Post Office Building. When told of the news, Barr's wife Abby told News 3 Now that the news made her day. We'll hear more from her tonight. And there's more to come at noon now. We'll find out what Mr. Food is working on. Here's Howard. Summers are hot, but lucky for us, one of our favorite kitchen appliances helps us keep our kitchen cool. We'll tell you all about it coming up next.
When I talk to many of you, I often hear how much you love your slow cookers, especially during the summer, and so do I. After all, nothing beats cooking all day long without heating up our kitchens. So let me share a comforting dinner idea that you can make as soon as tonight. We begin by placing a three to four pound chuck roast in a slow cooker. Next, we combine some beef broth, soy sauce, and a few off-the-shelf spices. Now we pour this over the roast, and all that's left to do is cover it, set it to low, and let it do its thing. After it's fork tender, we take it out, place it on a board, and shred it with a couple of forks, like this. Now you can use the meat however you'd like, but my favorite way is to serve it stuffed in crusty rolls with all the pan drippings. Does this look good or what? And it couldn't get any simpler. When you dunk this into the rich beef broth or spoon the broth over it, be ready for a flavor-packed bite that may get a bit messy, but all in a good way. To get the recipe for our slow cooker French dip sandwiches, all you need to do is visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a tasty slow cooked way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Thank you, Howard. There's more to come on News Street now at noon. Up next, another day of Sun in the Forecast. Meteorologist Chris Reese will have your first alert forecast coming up. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. You can call the hotline volunteers to help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Trade talks with China wrap up in a flash. And a tip isn't all your food delivery driver wants. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. 
Trade talks between the U.S. and China resumed but ended almost as quickly as they started. U.S. officials traveled to China yesterday and left today after a war of words ratcheted up. In a tweet, President Trump accused Beijing of stalling negotiations, while China's foreign ministry said President Trump was stalling. Hiring accelerated in July. According to payroll processor ADP, private employers added 156,000 jobs in July. That was better than expected, an improvement over June. Jobs in the services sector accounted for the majority of the gains. Investors and economists look at the ADP report for clues to the government's monthly jobs report, which is due this Friday. General Electric is out with its quarterly report card, and the company says it posted a loss of $61 million, but it says it's making progress in reconstructing its struggling power division, and GE is boosting its full-year financial predictions. Food delivery drivers are unpacking their secrets. In a recent survey by U.S. Foods, 28 percent of delivery people admitted to nibbling on food from an order, and more than half said they were tempted by its smell. Most consumers surveyed found it unacceptable for a carrier to take a few fries, while a small percentage say that's okay. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Thank you, Diane. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up three points. The Nasdaq also up 11 points. The S&P 500 up a little over a point. Let's check in now with Kiona 6 Farm Director Pam Yankee. Would you care if your delivery guys sampled your food? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I could see a fry, but I have concerns if you start with the fry, it's going to end up going <laughs> to the main course. Yeah, so, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I, please, hands off. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, though. Well, we're interested in the market today. You led with it, Mark, and they were talking about it on Wall Street. Disappointment in the abrupt end to the China talks. They're going to get back together in September. As soon as that news hit the marketplace, my numbers started going down. So what, I, what do I have good for you today? Well, we have a very special FFA member in our midst. Her name is Amelia Hayden from Sharon, Wisconsin, found out this morning that she is one of the national finalists for the American Star in Agribusiness Award. That will be presented during the 92nd Annual FFA Convention, National FFA Convention, out in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, coming up this October. Amelia is the sole representative from Wisconsin that is qualified as a finalist for any of the American Star Awards. So congratulations, Amelia. She will be one of four competing in that category down in Indianapolis, and we'll be sure to keep you up to speed on what's happening there. Don't forget the Wisconsin State Fair gets started tomorrow. So many stories that I want to bring your way. It's not just about the cream puffs, the carnival, and the concerts. Tomorrow evening, they've got something called an all-for-one show, uh, which allows our 4-H and FFA kids to partner up with kids that have uh, disabilities, uh, some challenges, and they partner up to show a pig tomorrow starting at 7 p.m. in the center ring at the Wisconsin State Fair. Just another one of those stories I don't want you to miss. Barrel cheese today in Chicago down two and a half at 169 and three quarters. 40-pound black cheese unchanged at 182. The double-A butter, penny and Three quarters higher at 234 and a half per pound. Boy, this weather looks like it's just what the doctor ordered to kick off the Wisconsin State Fair tomorrow. Mark. Yeah, it's often very hot during that fair, so this is good news. Yeah. Or wet, and this looks just perfect. <laughs> it does for a change. Yeah. All right, Pam, thank you. Here's Chris with that forecast, looking fairly good. That's right, and as we round out the month of July and head into August, let's take a moment to take a look back on how things shaped up for us. First things first, believe it or not, given this dry stretch of how we're ending things out, it was a wetter than normal July. We had uh, a little over or a little under two inches uh, above average precipitation going through the month. And the wettest week was this third week of July. This is where we had those complexes of showers and thunderstorms that came through during the overnight hours that just dumped on us when it came to the rainfall and made a lot of noise with the lightning and thunder. Since then, any precipitation has been fair light. What's also special about this week in particular, that was the hottest week of the month as well. Every single day during that stretch, well above average, but the month as a whole throughout July has been above average with temperature. There were very few days that were around average or slightly below, but we're going to be ending the month on that cooler than average tone. Temperatures right now already 
in the 70s. And they're going to be staying there as we go throughout the day. 76 right now. The winds are calm. The humidity is low. This is the perfect kind of weather as we round out the summer. Those winds still coming out of the north and northeast. This is bringing in some of that drier air from Canada and the lake. Check out temperatures right along the lake, though. 71 in Milwaukee, Sheboygan at 70, Manitowoc at 68, and then you get a little bit warmer as you work your way towards the Mississippi River. Prairie du Chien at 79 right now. Mineral Point is at 77. But for all of us, those dew points do remain into the low 50s. This is keeping uh, the air very comfortable, very dry. We'll start to see these numbers increase a little bit, though, as we head into, say, tomorrow and Friday. But I don't think it's going to be overwhelming at all. The drier air also keeping us free of any showers and thunderstorms over the state of Wisconsin. Any showers and thunderstorms right now are throughout parts of western Iowa. This has been a disturbance. It's kind of been sitting in place as we've gone through about the past uh, 24 to 36 hours. Oddly enough, a region of low pressure over the Rockies is helping to spark those showers and thunderstorms. But the high pressure over us will be keeping us dry as we go through today and into the weekend as well. Let's go ahead and time it out for you. Look for those temperatures to top out right around 78 this afternoon. Overnight tonight, we'll be falling back down into the mid 50s. Pay attention to what the winds are trying to do. They're trying to become more southerly in time. I think they'll do so. We'll top out probably in the low 80s and upper 70s tomorrow. And then here we are Friday morning. That southerly wind starts to become a little bit more robust. That's what's going to help those temperatures warm up into the low and mid 80s, going back above average as we begin to start the month of August. But check out what happens once we start to get towards the end of next week. These temperatures are going to begin to slide down and they will likely slide down to being below average for a bit. This big ridge of heat, yes, that's been driving our weather, but check out some of this cooler air over Canada. That's going to try to sneak its way in and take hold of the pattern over the Great Lakes as we grow into the second and third week of August. So we may get in on a weather pattern that's still drier, but a little bit cooler than we have been as if it hasn't been Perfect. It's still probably going to feel very good for a lot of folks going through some time. But through the rest of this afternoon, again, that sunshine does stick around. Temperatures top out right around 78. Tonight, more clear skies with those lows in the mid 50s. And then this is the week ahead, folks. It's another beautiful week. The only rain chances. We have a slight chance on Saturday, a chance of storms late Monday, and then a little chance of storms next Friday. Perfect this evening for the last concerts on the square. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Last it's <laughs> going to be a pretty good one. All right. All right. Thank you, Chris. There is more to come at noon. Can retiring in certain locations help you live longer? We'll tell you about a new study right after this.
Well, what if simply moving to a different zip code once you re reach retri retirement could add years to your life? Ben Conway has more in a new study. The average American can expect to live about 78 years. But of course, it all depends on things like income, race, overall health, and where they live. But you can change that. A recent study by the National Bureau of Economic Research, which looked at nearly 70 million Medicare beneficiaries from 1999 through 2014, found seniors who moved to certain locations in retirement could add or take off years from their lives. Now, the study did adjust for things like education, homicide rates, and overall health, and found that moving to a higher rated area after age 65 could lengthen someone's life by more than a year. The five best rated areas, well, they're all in New York and Florida, with Yonkers, New York, taking the cake, increasing lifespan an estimated 1.26 years. Also in the top 10, Asheville and Wilmington, North Carolina, along with Bridgeport, Connecticut and Lancaster, Pennsylvania. According to the study, though, moving to Lake Charles, Louisiana, could shorten an average senior's life the most by nine months. Some big cities like Las Vegas and Salt Lake City also made the list for lowering life expectancy. For today's Health Minute, I'm Britt Conway. Interesting study. Chris is here with a final check your forecast. The sunshine will continue as we go through the rest of the weekend, folks. Well, the rest of today and into the weekend anyway. Uh, look for those temperatures to top out right around 78 degrees today. We'll reach the low 80s into tomorrow. Same for Friday and Saturday. We will have a slight rain chance Saturday night, but I do think most folks are going to end up staying dry. Sunday looks good. A little rain chance Monday night into Tuesday. and Then next week looks good as well. It's a good stretch, folks. Yeah, it sure is. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.